All right, so here we have ready-made RCs, silver line, BR2205 H2600 kV motor. This is uh, a budget motor offered by ready-made RC, and this was donated by Justin Markland from YouTube. Uh, because he was curious uh, to see how this motor compares to the other motors that I've tested on the channel. Thanks Justin for donating to the cause, uh, making it possible for me to review this motor and share with the rest of you guys. Uh, so we'll see if this motor is a good option for your build, uh, especially for those people here in the US uh, coming from ready-made RC. Uh, that would be a pretty good option coming from a very reputable company uh, which is local we can get this uh, shipped and delivered in a few days uh, being here in the states so it comes in this regular box and uh, they give you a few M3 by uh, probably by six screws and uh, one night lock and these do have CW and CCW thread so depending on on what rotation of uh, of the motor you you pick uh, so it's gonna be the um, the thread on the prop knot uh, so CCW's uh, they come with the righty tighty um, nut so the standard thread reverse would be CW clockwise so if you guys want uh, just the standard thread uh, you know CCW it is this motor pretty standard construction there's nothing fancy about it uh, but for the price uh, you can ask for much uh, but it does actually in have some some features that uh, you we st we're starting to see in almost all motors now uh, which is a single piece shaft this is hardened steel shaft I guess uh, they're using a circlip to retain the shaft and this one does have a uh, curved N52 magnets so so that's pretty good for a budget motor, for a low budget motor actually. Uh, so now we're seeing these budget motors coming with uh, curved magnets. The air gap looks looks pretty good. It's not uh, all that uh, loose, you know. It's fairly tight. NMB bearings, pretty interesting, uh, pretty good. They went with brand name bearings uh, that are known to be good, high quality bearings. It does have a partially hollow shaft. Up to right about there is hollow. Uh, that much all the way to where it meets the bell I guess they stop there and right here too so so well from what I hear it's it's better to go all the way through because that relieves a lot uh, stress uh, on the shaft uh, not for weight but just to relieve stress uh, it makes the shaft even stronger is what I hear because it, it prevents uh, shearing from happening so let's see what it weighs. So this comes with 130 millimeters worth of wire. So let's see what it weighs. They're saying this motor weighs 30.5 grams without wire. So it's a little bit on the heavy side for being a 2205. Being that it's a budget motor, I guess that's that's where the money is. So 33.4 with the 130 millimeters worth of wire. We do cut uh, basically 390 millimeters. Yeah, that's that's pretty much equivalent to about to about three grams. So yeah, I believe that. I believe the 30.5 weight. A little bit on the heavy side, but you know, uh, if it's if it's gonna make a lot of power, a lot of thrust, uh, I guess we can we can overlook uh, the weight. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're using it for freestyle or uh, not for racing, just for freestyle uh, or just to practice, that would be a good option because you, you know, you're not spending a high dollar amount on motors. Okay, so let's take it apart and let's see, let's see what's inside. All right, so overall, uh, pretty decent finish on the motor, and looks like they left it uh, bare aluminum, just polished. Which is kind of nice. I guess that's why they call it a silver line. The prop base here has uh, this uh, pattern. When you clamp the prop, uh, that's gonna grab it pretty good. So I like when the motors have that. That helps when you tighten the lock nut. Uh, you don't need to put that much pressure, and the the prop will lock in place to the bell. So that's that's a good feature to have. So the only negative on this motor, uh, as far as uh, the built of this, the construction of the motor uh, that uh, Justin Justin Markland mentioned, and 
I thought I would uh, check here just to see if it's uh, it's prevalent, you know, in all the motors and not just a few. Uh, what he mentioned is that there's some a little bit of a vertical play, uh, a little bit more than compared to other motors, I guess more premium motors. So as you can see, I don't know if it's going to be quite visible there on the video, but there is like could be like 0.2 millimeters maybe, 0.3 millimeters uh, of play hard to measure but yeah you could you could definitely feel it it seems either they didn't do the groove for the circlip they made it a little bit too far out or they needed to use a couple of washers instead, instead of just, just one uh, so that would have solved the, uh, this uh, small vertical play uh, but I don't think that's gonna like this much vertical play. I don't think it's gonna affect the performance that that much. Of course, you it's preferable not to have any vertical play at all. Uh, you know, you want to have the magnets and the stator lined up just right, uh, so that you get the uh, the best uh, interaction between the magnets and the stator. But it's pretty small. I wouldn't be too concerned with that much, and and the shaft seems to be pretty well on. So I don't, I don't think that's you know that's gonna become any any worse uh, over time. Of course, of course, if the if the brass washer um, degrades over time, you know, you it grinds or it just becomes thinner somehow then of course the, the play is going to be more so remove the circlip uh, pretty easily and uh, the bell comes off pretty easily so there we have the magnets they look pretty pretty chunky uh, and I guess that's where the weight uh, comes they're, you know they're not using thin magnets so so fairly nice and chunky and they are curved magnets pretty good density on the magnets as you can see there's not much gap in between adjacent magnets so uh, I can see where where a lot of the weight comes from shaft uh, as, as I, uh, we saw it's single piece shaft it is a little bit magnetic so it's not quite uh, stainless so a little bit magnetic still so hopefully hopefully it is hardened steel here's the stator as you can see pretty pretty good windings uh, pretty neat uh, not, not too bad and there's the NMB bearings 4 by 9 by 4 so standard bearings easy to find uh, pretty standard bearings pretty good size and let's look at the stator height and as best as I could measure uh, it's not actually 5 millimeters is more like 5.6 millimeters in height so you know we're getting slightly li larger stator which is n not a bad thing you know so again that's another factor for the weight uh, so slightly taller stator it's gonna add more weight uh, just just because it, it probably has one or two extra laminations and uh, also it's gonna allow for more copper to to be wound around the stator so that that I guess that's where the 30 grams come from uh, so as best as I could count uh, those were 28 28 uh, laminations so 28 laminations so we have a 0.6 5.6 height on the stator and I as best as I could count it was 28 laminations so that gives us 0.2 so it's not 0.15 as they mentioned on the uh, specs on on the ready-made RC website but uh, you know there's a standard 0.2 millimeter in laminations nothing wrong with that uh, uh, almost everybody uses 0.2 laminations and that's that's a good thickness lamination so so there you go that's a uh, that's the motor uh, as you can see uh, low budget but seems to be pretty pretty well built so should perform pretty well I think uh, just based on what I'm seeing here 
uh, tight air gap, N52 magnets, chunky, 5.6 uh, height on the stator, so it should 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 be pretty good, I think. Uh, for this high KV, we'll see we'll see how it performs. Uh, we'll put it on the thrust stand and see how it does and how it stacks up against the other ones. Uh, so this motor measured at 2635 kV, uh, pretty close to the spec value of 2600 kV. So that's pretty good, uh, slightly higher, no worries there. Th this motor was donated by uh, Justin Markland and what he was interested in it was 4 inch performance. So I went ahead and tested what I think is the most uh, powerful 4 inch props. Uh, this is the new one from HQ, the 4043 by 3 B1S. And uh, of course the other ones uh, are pretty popular, the DAL T4045, DYS or HQ or DAL, uh, they're all the same, King Kong makes it too, the 4040x3, uh, the Lumineer 4040x3 and the DAL or any of the other clones 4040x4. Uh, so we can see the this new HQ 4043x3, uh, pretty respectable, like 868 at a very very manageable 22 amps uh, so that's pretty efficient uh, on the top end it, it seems to kind of like uh, hit a wall but uh, but again the amps are are pretty low so that's an efficient prop it's kind of surprising that this uh, 4045 by 3 dial got a slightly higher overall thrust but uh, it doesn't really tell you the whole story it could be this 4043 builds up thrust uh, sooner so on the mid-range it may have a little bit more thrust than uh, the 4040 by 3 this is another prop uh, that's kind of uh, popular I, I run this on some of my four inch quads it's not the best best prop but it's, it's pretty decent all around I think so nearly a thousand grams uh, at uh, 29 amps and then we go on to the heavier four inch props surpassing the one kilogram mark the Lumineer and the Dal Q4040 by three so nearly about the same the, the four blade prop of course draws a little bit more amps but still I think uh, pretty manageable amps because uh, you got to remember these are static so in the air basically you take out 30 uh, percent so multiply times 0.7 and it kind of gives you the uh, what you expect to see as a max burst in the air so sustained max is going to be uh, even lower than 30 percent that you take off uh, so the motor seems to do pretty okay with the four inch prop anytime you I see like close to one kilogram with any of these three uh, four inch props pretty okay motor I think uh, premium motors will do just about that much uh, when we move to the five inch props we start to see the limitations of the motor as the load increases so do the amps the amps are kind of getting a little bit on the high side it could be perhaps uh, the type of wire maybe it's not optimal wire you know it, maybe it's got too much resistance on the on the windings because uh, we see that as 
these loads are increasing, the amps are somewhat high, I think, uh, compared to other motors of similar KV. But still, the motor seems kind of willing, you know, uh, to pull uh, on, uh, on thrust. Uh, although, as you saw on the video with the six inch prop, it kind of overheated and there was a little bit of smoke. Uh, so I, I don't usually see smoke on motors uh, with that type of uh, of run. Uh, the run wasn't really all that uh, long. Uh, it was a uh, you know like a quick pull on the motor and uh, it seemed to have overheated and threw out a little bit of smoke. Of course uh, that's only on the thrust stand. This is very harsh on the motors. In the air you'll never see that much uh, load. So in the air even though right here we saw smoke uh, with this prop with the 6040 in the air you won't uh, it, it should be okay because uh, you know these 50 amps are gonna be much lower 30 percent lower so so that's gonna be about uh, uh, what about 35 amps maybe 30 amps or so the motor will be able to handle that much uh, uh, momentary burst uh, so overall uh, an okay motor uh, on 4 inch uh, as you can see it uh, pr it's pretty capable on 4 inch uh, even though it's a little bit on the heavy side uh, for the size motor 2205 uh, but then you have to consider of course the uh, uh, the price you know its price is 1050 uh, here in the US uh, and coming from ready made RC we know that if uh, there's something wrong with the motor they'll uh, you know they'll back up their products, so that that's a big plus. Uh, they're local, so so it would be pretty easy to uh, uh, to deal with them locally. Uh, for the larger five-inch props, the heavier pitch and six-inch props, the, there's better options than this motor because you know this one's this one's uh, gonna drain the battery probably rather quickly. Uh, it'll work. Uh, it, it'll do fine, but uh, you know there's just better options but uh, for the lighter 5 inch and 4 inch props it seems to be a pretty good option especially if you want to build a, a basher or something to train with that you don't mind like messing up a motor or hitting it or you're on a budget you know you want to build a, a budget quad or or just not have to spend a lot of money so anyway uh, that's the review for the motor uh, hope you find this data useful and uh, until the next video